Hello again, everybody. Todd Michael Putnam here, bringing you another table from D&D Creative Table Designs. Um, work has been crazy for the last three weeks, uh, and so I really didn't get a chance to do a whole lot for a while. And finally, uh, last night and today, I actually had uh, a few hours to throw together a serious build, uh, try and do something halfway decent. And my Dwarven Forge Kickstarter finally had come in for Hellscape. And I wanted to put that to the test and uh, play around with it, see what I could come up with. Uh, it's a really, really cool set. I'm very happy with it. Uh, there's nuances to it, things that are, that are, that are not super great, but there are other parts uh, that, that more than make up for it, I think. Uh, so just want to do a, an overview of the table real quick. Uh, back here in the back side, these are just uh, terrain trays that I've laid out uh, from the Dwarven Forge Kickstarter and from other uh, Dwarven Forge uh, uh, sets that are lava trays. The floating stones there you, that you can see these guys right here, they come from the Caverns Deep Under Doom Kickstarter. Uh, and those are available retail now, so you can get those. Uh, but they're from Under Doom and they're uh, amazing. So I just created a, 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 a basically a lava ocean on the backside of it, uh, spreading out into eternity with these floating rocks and volcanic islands underneath it. And then of course, uh, flying above and landing are, are the uh, uh, Vrox uh, basically feasting on anything that manages to escape from the, the their, their uh, prison torments. Uh, they basically just feed on them like vultures. So that's the idea is there's this huge ocean of lava lapping against the shores of hell uh, that is uh, the backdrop of everything that's going on. Uh, and then we, of course, have the Dwarven Forge files and whatnot, uh, tiles here. Um, going to show you something. Right now I have the, the LED turned off. Underneath a lot of this stuff, uh, you can see, I think, you can see the thickness there and the little wire. Those are the light panels for the um, Hellscape Kickstarter. And what happens is you've got a little potentiometer here thing. I think that's what it's called. And as you click that up and turn it on, you can, you can turn the brightness of hell, as it were, up or down, you can really crank it up so it's super, super bright and hot, or you can dial that back a little bit, uh, slowly making it cooler, which is a great, great feature. Um, it's not just great for storytelling uh, because you can just use it for various parts of hell that, you know, leave it real low for the lower stuff and, and crank it up higher for the, as you get deeper and deeper into hell. It's also great for just visual imaging, um, taking pictures and stuff like that. The, if you put it up super bright, it can freak out the cameras and they sometimes don't know how to deal with it and it makes everything around it blurry. So the ability to rotate that up and down uh, also helps for, uh, for any uh, photographs that you're taking. But those light panels are underlaying a lot of this different thing. Some of them are hooked together just directly one big square hooked to another with a small little um, clip. And other ones have these little wires that you see right there running from one, it's still the same clip, but it's just a wire that goes from one to the other. It's basically just a big chain lighting system uh, that it has you know, four links, one on each side of the square, and you just put your, your uh, tiles together in whatever order that you want, uh, which, is, which is very useful. Um, you, can, you can be very creative with that, it's fantastic. And not only do these guys glow right here, obviously, but you can also see that these guys glow as well. They're, they're made of a, they've got some kind of a translucent material. I'm going to pull this up here and just show you. See that material? It's not the normal uh, opaque type color that it has for most Dwarven Forge. This allows the light to shine through it. Uh, it's really a brilliant uh, idea and uh, allows hell to, uh, to seep up through the cracks, so to speak, so you can really get the feeling of heat and stuff. Instead of just being coloration, it's actual light emanating uh, to help give you that feeling of, of, uh, of intense heat. So that's the lighting portion of it. Other ones, I should say, like this one right here, you see the flickering light a little bit. You may or may not flicker. Yeah, just a little, you can see it. It's hard in this particular light to see it, but um, this one just has LEDs in it. Uh, so you can just, there's a small micro switch on the back of it and that turns the LED on and off to get that one flickering. The same with this top piece right here, you can see flickering. It's just got LEDs in there that you can do. And then there's also LEDs in the top portion of the waterfall. And then the bottom portion is lit by the light LED panel underneath it uh, to try and, and make it a whole thing. And then they also have, I'll come over here, they have these uh, transparencies. Uh, they have a couple different ones. This one is their lava transparency, which allows the light to shine through. And so you just lay this small, I think it's one foot by one foot, I presume, 
transparency down on top of a light panel, and there you go, you've got your glowing lava. Um, you can see I can crank the, the brightness up and down on that as well. It's all for the same thing. Now, you can't control them individually unless you have them hooked to different potentiometers. Uh, if you get two or three sets of them, then, of course, you can uh, change the lighting on different ones. Uh, in this particular build, I'm just using one so they all go to the same brightness. But you just lay that down, and, uh, and there you go. You've, you've got you know, your glowing lava underneath the bridge, uh, and, and that really works out great. And, and again, you can see there's the little small cable that going to the other one there, just connecting it, and it works great. Those are, those are fantastic. I'm going to turn this down just a little bit just to make sure that uh, it doesn't mess up the camera too much. Um, in this particular build, I also threw together some uh, Underdoom stuff because it uh, it really went well with the mat, the battle mat. I And I want to say I got it from P-Works uh, Gaming Studios, but uh, it, it could be from, from somebody else. This is basically just a volcanic mat. You just want to do a search for a, a volcanic play mat. And this particular play mat is made out of uh, neoprene, the mouse material. Uh, mouse mat material, which is great because it doesn't reflect light. If you use the vinyl stuff and the light is shooting, shining down at the right angle, um, it puts a big glare on the map, and um, that's less cool. So the neoprene it rolls up a little wider, but on the same token, by the same token, when you lay it out on the table, it just looks so much better. So there's those aspects. Um, over here we have, and I just threw some stuff together. This particular one uh, that's that's. Uh, Graz, I think is how that's pronounced, is coming out of a portal. Um, it, these little portals I got off of eBay. I don't remember where, but I just had them painted up so that they're like demonic looking. Uh, and they're, they're great for summoning in greater demon lords or anything like that or whatever you want to use them for. But it's great for any kind of a demon gate type experience. So I just had them painted up to, to blend well with the set. So there's Graz there. This one here, you've got a, a Merilith and she's torturing this, uh, this one poor soul with her many curved blades. Uh, so that's what's going on with there. Behind her, I threw in a, um, a Lemire, I think it's Lemire feeding pit. Uh, these um, low, low born type, not born, but uh, low level demons that are basically lost souls that their sole purpose is just to be fed on by the, the greater demons. Um, they're just, you know, petty criminals or whoever that just never found redemption in life, supposedly. And so here they are. Uh, this is what their, their final fate is. Uh, and then over here, I put a fallen angel. Uh, you can see his wings have been clipped. This is just like one of the coolest looking minis ever. His wings have been clipped uh, and are bloody, so he can't fly. So he's a fallen angel. And I have him here in this one small area, and he's being tortured by these three demons uh, at the behest of uh, this, this uh, lady who's in charge. So uh, the demonic matron there. So she's doing that, and then uh, in this particular one up here, we've got Despater. I can't remember. I found him a long time ago. He was a rare find. Um, it's a great mini right there. Technically, that's not in the lore. Despater is supposed to be from uh, as a as a uh, devil, not a demon, so he wouldn't be in here with everybody else. Sorry about the uh, the blur there, but you know what? We're just going to give it a pass. And he's got a, a consort, of course, with him, floating in through the gate. Uh, and here we have some kind of a, a lesser demon or, or um, high priestess or something like that. She is crossing to the center of this bridge of lava, over a bridge over this lava, to uh, attempt to make some kind of a deal with Despater himself. Uh, and if, of course, if the terms of the deal are not pleasing to him, then uh, with just a wave of his hand, she falls into the, uh, the lava pit below and, um, and suffers agonizing death. So, and that's the, the, the basic, oh, I'm sorry, one more thing here. You've got this guy that I just called the Time Lord Demon, the Time Warden Demon, and he just sits up there, and his sole purpose is basically to let all those who are being uh, tortured know that their time in hell will never be up, that no amount of uh, suffering will be enough, and they will continue to be tortured. There is no end to their sentence. So he just rings out the time to, let it, to remind everyone that it doesn't matter what time it is or how much time has gone by their torturing will always continue for all of eternity. It's just more like a psychological thing going on. So those are the basic ideas of the set. This particular one, uh, let me switch back here. This one here is just the Dwarven Forge Lava Caverns. I uh, forgot to mention that uh, in the, the thing. Uh, but the, uh, And that that's pretty much it. That's basically the three sets. The uh, um, Hellscape set, the... Um, 
Underdoom set and the Lava, Lava Caverns uh, pretty much makes up this entire thing, just those three sets. And then I went online at, uh, on eBay and I found all kinds of uh, different types of strange, um, I wouldn't call it foliage, but, you know, cancerous-like plants, I guess. I'm not sure how it's, but demonic-like plant growth um, that I uh, had painted up so that it has this, uh, has this hell-like feel to it. See the back I had and the grayish type color that goes kind of with the mat itself, uh, with the, the earth it's pouring out of, but then it has that almost like a fiery plume on the inside blasting out of it. And each of these are just kind of painted up slightly different. Same with this one right here. It just makes a great uh, set piece throwing in there that uh, gives you just that feeling of, of hell itself, that the landscape is different, that, that there's certainly no greenery or anything. Uh, same thing with these guys right here. These are supposed to be, uh, you know, I'm not really sure what they're supposed to be. They could be shooting out some kind of eggs or it could be a cocoon of something or whatever it is. It could be like a giant gas plant or it could shoot out lava or whatever you want, whatever purpose you want to use it for. Uh, but I just found a variety of things like that on eBay and had them painted up so that it would really provide that feel of a, of a different type of a landscape. So we pan back and see the whole thing. It, uh, the entire table is six foot by four foot and uh, it takes up pretty much most of it. Um, and that's basically the setup. Uh, I think that's all the basic questions I can imagine would be asked. Uh, hopefully I covered everything, but if you've got any more questions, you can always ask. Uh, you can check out the still pictures, of course, at d, &D Creative Table Designs. Um, and uh, appreciate you taking the time to check it out. This was uh, a journey through hell, and uh, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks again, and take care.